can we go to that world of psychedelics for for a bit? Sure. What, what do you think? Um, so Joe Rogan apparently and many others uh, meet apparently elves when they on uh, DMT. A lot of people report this kind of creatures that they see, mm-hmm. and, that, and again, it's probably the failure of language to describe that experience. But DMT is an interesting one. There's, uh, as as you're aware, there's a bunch of studies going on on psychedel- psychedelics currently MDMA, um, uh, psilocybin, in uh, John Hopkins and a bunch of other places. Uh, but DMT, they all speak of as like some extra super level of a psychedelic. Yeah, do you have a sense of where it is our mind goes on uh, in psych- on psychedelics, but in, in DMT especially? Well, unfortunately, I haven't taken DMT. So unfortunately or fortunately? Unfortunately, okay. yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, although it's, I presume it's in my body as it is in uh, everyone's brain and in many, many plants, apparently. But... Um, I've wanted to take it. I, ha- I haven't been. I had an opportunity that was presented itself that where it was obviously the the right thing for me to be doing. Uh, but you know, for those who don't know, DMT is is often touted as the most intense psychedelic and also the shortest acting. I mean, you smoke it and it's it's basically a ten minute experience or a or a three minute experience within like a ten minute window uh, that you, when you're really down after ten minutes or so. Um, and Terence McKenna was a big proponent of DMT. That was that was his, you know, the center of the bullseye for him psychedelically, apparently. Um, and it does it is characterized, it seems, for many people uh, by this phenomenon, which is which is unlike virtually any other psychedelic experience. Which is your your, it's not just your perception being broadened or changed. It's you, according according to Terence McKenna feeling fairly unchanged, but catapulted into a, a different circumstance. You, I mean, you have been shot elsewhere mm-hmm. and find yourself in relationship to other entities of some kind. Right? So, so the place is populated with, with things that seem not to be your m- mind. So it does yeah. feel like travel to another place because yeah. you're unchanged yourself. According, yeah. Again, I, ha- I just have this on the authority of the people who have described their experience. But it sounds like it's a pr- it's pretty common. I, it sounds like it's pretty common for people not to have the full experience because it's apparently pretty uh, unpleasant to smoke. So it's like getting enough on board in order to get shot out of the the, the cannon uh, and land among the uh, what McKenna called uh, self transforming machine elves yeah. um, that appeared to him like jeweled you know, Fabergé egg, like ba- self-dribbling basketballs that were handing him uh, 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 completely uninterpretable reams of, of profound knowledge. Um, it's a, it's an experience I haven't had, so I just have to accept that people have had it. Um, I would just point out that our minds are clearly capable of producing apparent others on demand that are totally compelling to us, right? There's no there's no limit to our ability to do that, as anyone who's ever remembered a dream can attest. I mean, we, every night we go to sleep. You know, some of us don't remember dreams very often, but um, some dream vividly every night. And just think of how insane that experience is. I mean, you, you you've forgotten where you were, right? That's the strangest part. I mean, this is psychosis, right? You're you have you have lost your mind. You have lost your connection to your uh, episodic memory, uh, or, or even your expectations that reality won't undergo wholesale changes a moment after you have closed your eyes, right? Like you, you're you're in bed, you're you know watching something on Netflix, you're waiting to fall asleep, and then the next thing that happens to you is impossible. And you're not surprised, right? You're talking to dead people. You're hanging out with famous people. You're, you're uh, someplace you couldn't physically be. You can fly, and the, even that's not surprising, right? So it's, it's you have lost your mind, but relevantly for this, or found it. You found some. I mean, it, lucid dreaming is very interesting because then then you can ha- have the best of both circumstances, and it, and it's uh, 
that, that then it can be kind of systematically explored. But what but, I mean by found, just to sorry to interrupt, yeah. is like if we take uh, this uh, this brilliant idea that language constrains us, grounds us, language and other things of the waking world ground us. Maybe it is that you've found the full the full capacity of your cognition when you dream or when you do psychedelics. You're stepping outside the, mm. the, the little human cage, the cage of the human condition. To get, open the door and step out and look around and then go back in. Well, you've, you've definitely stepped out of something and into something else, but you've also <laughs> lost something, right? You've lost certain that? capacities Memory? that you want. Well, just, yeah, in this case, you literally didn't, you don't, you don't have enough presence of mind in the dream, in the dreaming state, or even in the psychedelic state, if you take enough, uh, to do you math. Have, there, you, you, there's no psychological, there's very little psychological continuity with your life, such that you're not surprised to be in the presence of someone who should be, you should know is dead or you should know you're not likely to have met no, by normal channels, right? You're, yeah. you know, you're now talking to some celebrity and it turns out you're best friends, right? And you're not even, you have no memory of how you got there. You know, you're like, how did you get into the room? You're like, how did you, did you drive to this restaurant? You know, you have no memory and none of that's surprising to you. So you're, you're kind of brain damaged in a way. You're not reality testing in the normal way. The fascinating possibility is that there's probably thousands of people who've taken psychedelics of various forms and have met Sam Harris on that journey. Well, I, well, I would put it more likely in, in dreams, not, you know, because in psychedelic with psychedelics, you don't tend to hallucinate in the in a dreamlike way. I mean, the, so DMT is, is giving you a an experience of others, but it's it seems to be non non-standard. It's not like it, it's not just like dream hallucinations. But but to, to the point of coming back to DMT, the people want to suggest, and, T and Terrence McKenna certainly did suggest, that because these others are so obviously other and they're so vivid, well, then they could not possibly be the, the creation of, of my own mind. But every night in dreams, you create a, a, con a compelling, or what is to you at the time, a totally compelling simulacrum of another person. Right, and uh, that's uh, that just proves the mind is capable of doing it. Now, it's it's uh, the the phenomenon of lucid dreaming shows that the mind isn't capable of doing everything you think it might be capable of, even in that space. So, uh, one of the things that people have discovered in in lucid dreams, and I, I haven't done a lot of lucid dreaming, so I've I can't confirm all of this. So I can con confirm some of it. Uh, Apparently, in every house, in in every room in the the mansion of dreams, all light switches are dimmer switches. Like if you go into a dark room and flip on the light, it gradually comes up. It doesn't it doesn't come up uh, instantly on demand uh, because uh, you know apparently this is covering f for the brain's inability to to produce from a you know a standing start ri ri visually rich imagery on demand. So there's, there's a, I haven't confirmed that, but that was, people who've done research on lucid dreaming claim that, that it's, it's all dimmer switches. Uh, but one thing I have noticed, and you know, people can check this out, is that in a dream, if you look at text, you know, a page of text, you know, or, or a sign, uh, you know, or a television that has text on it, and then you turn away and you look back at that text, the text will have changed. Right, there's no, the total is it's just a, a chronic instability, graphical in, instability of text uh, in the dream state, and uh, I don't know if that you know maybe that's someone can confirm that that's not true for them, but that's whenever I've checked that out, that has been true for me. So it keeps generating it like uh, real time, it's, yeah, from a video game perspective. Yeah, it's render, it's rendering, <laughs> it's re-rendering it for some reason. What's interesting, I actually I don't know how I found myself in this sets of uh, that part of the internet. But uh, there's quite a lot of discussion about what it's like to do math on LSD. Uh -huh. Because apparently one of the deepest thinking processes needed is those of mathematicians or theoretical computer scientists. B basically doing anything that involves math is proofs and you have to think creatively, but also deeply. And you have to think for many hours at a time. Mm. And so they're always looking for ways to like, is there 
is there any sparks of creativity that could be injected? And apparently, out of all the psychedelics, the the worst is LSD because it completely destroys your ability to do math well. Hmm. And I wonder whether that has to do with your ability to vi visualize geometric things in a stable way in your mind and hold them there and stitch things together, which is often what's required for proofs. Hmm. But uh, again, this <laughs> it's difficult to kind of research these kinds of concepts, but it does make me wonder where, what are the spaces, how is the space of things you're able to think about and explore morphed by different, by different psychedelics or dream states and so on. And how is that different? How much does it overlap with reality? And what is fundamental, what is reality? Is there a waking state reality? Or is it just a tiny subset of reality and we get to take a step in other versions of it? We, we tend to mm -hmm. think very much in a space time, four dimensional, there's a three dimensional world, there's time. And that's what we think about reality. And we think of traveling as walking from point A to point B in the three-dimensional world. But that's a very kind of human surviving, trying not to get eaten by a lion conception of reality. What if traveling is something like we do with psychedelics and meet the elves? What if it's something, what if thinking or the space of ideas as we kind of grow and think through ideas, that's traveling? Mm. Or what if memories is traveling? 